Can the Filipino David defeat the Chinese Goliath? Philippine president has likened the West Philippine Sea dispute between the Philippines and China to the story of David and Goliath in the Bible. In an interview, the president stated that he won't give up even one square inch of territory to any foreign power. It's the duty of any Filipino to defend the country's sovereignty and sovereign rights over the West Philippine Sea. But why has Marcos compared the situation in the West Philippine Sea to the David and Goliath story? And who are they? Marcos compared the situation in the West Philippine Sea to the story of Goliath and David because it portrays a smaller entity standing up against a larger one. In this analogy, the Philippines represents David, a smaller and weaker force, while China embodies Goliath, a larger and more formidable opponent. So the Philippines is like David, the smaller and weaker one, while China is like Goliath, the bigger and stronger one. So what's the story behind David and Goliath? The Philistines were attacking the Israelites. Every morning, a giant Philistine named Goliath challenged any Israelite to fight him. Goliath was bigger and taller than anyone else, and he was fierce. He wore heavy armor and carried a sword, spear, and large shield. No one dared to fight him. David was a young shepherd boy who had faith in the Lord. His older brothers were soldiers in Israel's army. One day, David took his brother some food. When he arrived at the army's camp, he heard Goliath's challenge. David asked the soldiers why no one defended Israel. His brothers were angry and told him to go take care of the sheep. But David knew the Lord would defend Israel. King Saul knew of David's faith, so he asked to see David. David told Saul he was not afraid to fight Goliath. David explained that once when he was looking after his sheep, he killed a lion and a bear. The Lord protected him then, and David knew the Lord would protect him again. Saul gave David his armor, but it did not fit, so David took it off. He decided to fight without any armor. David collected five smooth stones and put them in a bag. He took his sling and shepherd's staff and went to face Goliath. When Goliath saw David, he shouted and made fun of him. He said a shepherd boy could not beat him. David shouted back and he trusted the Lord to protect him. David said he would beat Goliath to show the Lord's greatness. David ran toward Goliath. He quickly threw a stone with his sling. The stone hit Goliath in the forehead and the giant man fell to the ground. The Lord helped David defeat Goliath without a sword or armor. When the Philistines saw that Goliath was dead, they ran away in fear. The Israelites won the battle. David trusted the Lord and the Lord protected Israel. To begin discussing the South China Sea, let's first examine the sequence of events in the conflict in the South China Sea. In January 1996, three Chinese naval vessels fight a 90-minute battle with a Philippine Navy gunboat near Capone's Island in the Mischief Reef, part of the sparkly chain of islands claimed by Manila. The incident marks the first time China engages in military confrontation with an ASEAN member other than Vietnam. The clash, which triggers a crisis in Sino-Philippine relations, revives U.S.-Philippine military ties. Soon after the incident, U.S. Navy SEALs conduct a joint military exercise with the Philippine counterparts on Palawan Island. Tensions over the occupation subside by mid-year when the Philippines and China sign a non-binding code of conduct that calls for a peaceful resolution to the territorial dispute. In March 2011, Chinese surveillance ships force a Philippine vessel conducting surveys in the Reed Bank to leave the area. In response to a spate of skirmishes with Chinese vessels, the Philippine government begins referring to the South China Sea as the West Philippine Sea in all official communications. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton also begins referring to the South China Sea as the West Philippine Sea. On April 8, 2012, Scarborough Shoal incident happened. Diplomatic relations between Manila and Beijing declined further after the Philippines dispatches a warship to confront Chinese fishing boats in the Scarborough Shoal, north of the Spartleys. China then dispatches its own surveillance vessels to protect its fishermen, and a two-month standoff ensues. 
as China quarantines some fruits from the Philippines and warns against tourism to the country, economic relations strain between China and the Philippines. Philippine losses in banana exports in May were estimated at $34 million. Bilateral talks stall repeatedly over withdrawal from the shawl, and the Philippine government claims it's pursuing various avenues, including ASEAN involvement, legal options under UNCLOS, and an appeal to the United States for a guarantee of assistance in case of military confrontation. On January 22, 2013, the Philippines files UN arbitration over China's sovereignty claims. The Philippines initiates an international arbitration case under UNCLOS over Chinese claims of sovereignty to the Spotleys and Scarborough Shaw. China rejects the process, forcing the court and its arbitration to continue without its participation. The case marks the first time a country has brought a claim against China under UNCLOS regarding the issue. On April 28, 2014, the Philippines and America signed new defense pact. Then US President Barack Obama, on the last leg of Four Nation Asia tour, signs a new 10-year military pact with the Philippines under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. The US military would gain increased rotational troop presence in the country, engage in more joining training and have greater access to bases across the archipelago, including ports and airfields. The deal is the centerpiece of Obama's first visit to the Philippines. On February 14, 2016, China deploys missiles to parasols. Beijing deploys surface-to-air missiles on Woody Island, a landmass in the Parasol Island chain in the South China Sea. America and regional officials warn that the deployment may signal a militarization of the maritime disputes. On July 12, 2016, tribunal rules against China's South China Sea claims. The Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague rules in favor of the Philippines in a case open in 2013 against China. The tribunal finds that China's declared nine dash line has no legal basis for its claims to historical rights to resources in the South China Sea. The court also rules that none of the land features fit requirements under the UN Convention on the Law and the Sea. The court says Beijing violated its obligations as a member of UNCLOS, saying its island building activities harm the marine environment. On May 18, 2018, Chinese bomber lands on island. For the first time, a Chinese bomber lands on an island reef in the South China Sea. Bombers taking off from the island could reach areas throughout the South China Sea, including nearly all of the Philippines. On April 5, 2019, Philippine President Duterte warns he will send troops on a suicide mission if China continues to send ships near the Philippines occupied Tito Island in the Spartly chain. His threat comes after more than 200 Chinese ships were seen near the island from January to March. The Philippines had been constructing a beaching ramp on the island, which is also claimed by China. On February 2020, China more aggressively asserts its claims in the South China Sea. In February, a Chinese naval ship reportedly aims its weapons control system at a Philippine naval ship in the Spirely Islands. The next month, China opens new research stations which include defense silos and military-grade runways on the Ferry Cross and Subi Reef. In March 2021 to November 2022, China steps up its intimidation tactics in the wake of President Duterte's hardening support for the 2016 Hague ruling that rejected the Nine Dash Line. China deploys 200 ships to Whitsun Reef, parts of the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, while Beijing claims the ships are a fishing fleet. Manila says they appear to be operated by military personnel. On February 4th, 2023, less than a year after taking office, President Ferdinand Marcos welcomed an expanded U.S. military presence on the island nation. The four additional military bases in the northern Philippines will be more than double the previous number, expanding the United States' presence in the South China Sea. The following month, Beijing announces a 7% increase in military spending citing escalating threats. 
In August 28, 2023, China releases an updated version of an official territorial map, which includes an extra dash added to the previous 9 dash line. The new 10 dash map includes the island of Taiwan and most of the Spirit Islands, in violation of the unclassed determination. The new map prompts a swift rejection by ASEAN members, including Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. India, Japan, and Taiwan also voiced their concern. On April 27, 2023, a Chinese Coast Guard ship cuts off a Philippine patrol vessel carrying journalists in the disputed South China Sea, causing a near collision. The Philippine Coast Guard ship was shadowed by Chinese Navy and Coast Guard ships and ordered to leave the water several times. The incident happened after the Philippine Coast Guard boats approached 2nd Thomas Shaw, where Philippine Marines are stationed in a rundown naval ship grounded to assert Manila's territorial claim in the waters. As the Philippine Coast Guard ship neared the Shaw, a Chinese Coast Guard vessel more than twice its size sailed into its path. 2nd Thomas Shaw is about 200 kilometers from the major Philippine island of Palawan and more than a thousand kilometers from China's nearest major landmass of Hainan Island. On March 6th, Chinese and Philippine Coast Guard vessels collided in the disputed South China Sea, and four Filipino crew members were injured as Southeast Asian leaders gathered for a summit that was expected to touch on Beijing's aggression at sea. The Chinese Coast Guard ships and accompanying vessels blocked the Philippine Coast Guard and supply vessels off the disputed 2nd Thomas Shaw and executed dangerous maneuvers that caused two minor collisions between the Chinese ships and two of the Philippine vessels. The supply boat manned by Filipino Navy personnel was later hit by water cannon blasts from two Chinese Coast Guard ships. Its windshield shattered, injuring at least four Filipino crew members. So what now? What's going to happen? Will the conflict be peacefully resolved or evolve into a military confrontation between the Philippines and China? Two scenarios are likely to happen. The best case scenario entails both countries participating in diplomatic talks to settle the dispute, while the worst case scenario involves the conflict escalating into a military confrontation, potentially sparking a third world war and leading to the collapse of civilization as we know it. Let's look at the best case scenario. The best case scenario would be China and the Philippines agree to improve maritime communication and to properly manage conflict and differences through friendly talks. Furthermore, the two countries will hold talks and join oil and gas exploration in the South China Sea. God forbid, the worst case scenario is that the two nations enter direct military confrontation, possibly drawing in America and potentially leading to the deployment of nuclear weapons. The likelihood of conflict is considerably greater now compared to the past. There is concern that conflict might not arise from a deliberate strategic choice by a nation, but rather from a serviceman's error or an action that is misinterpreted. Keep in mind that China is the world's second strongest military after America. The Philippines can't beat China alone. America would only step in if there is a war and the mutual defense treaty is called into action. The big question is, will America risk a third world war with China that could involve NATO, the Korean Peninsula, Australia and Japan? Will America risk a war with China? which has 400 nuclear warheads that could be dropped on US cities, killing millions of Americans for the sake of the Philippines. The US may or may not risk a war with China. Let's take a closer look at both possibilities. The first possible scenario is that America might not risk a war with China. To avoid confrontation with China, America would invoke other provisions in the MDT that prevented from declaring war. One of these is that the attack by China, presumably, must be on metropolitan territory, which by definition does not refer to conflict in areas under dispute, such as the Spotlys. Similar to what happened in 2012, President Aquino met with President Obama 
in Washington and invoked the MDT during the Scarborough Shoal standoff, telling the US president that he hoped US warships would intervene if a conflict erupts between China and the Philippines. If China sinks Philippine Navy or Coast Guard vessels attempting to supply construction materials for the Marine Platoon there to repair the Sierra Madre, the US might not immediately attack Chinese vessels, which could risk a nuclear war with China. Since America can't risk a nuclear war, China may exploit the situation and tow away or sink the Sierra Madre. So what would America's response be if Sierra Madre was sunk? To avoid confrontation, the likely response of the US would not be a military one. It would instead invoke the MDT's Article 5, which states, any such arm attack and all measures taken as a result thereof shall be immediately reported to the Security Council of the United Nations. Such measures shall be terminated when the Security Council has taken the measures necessary to restore and maintain international peace and security. China would deploy the PLA Navy warships at Scarborough Shaw, maybe even take over the biggest island, Pagasa. President Biden would find an excuse not to intervene, especially he's running for re-election just eight months away. His generals would advise him the military cannot deal with another problem. The worst case scenario is that America intervenes and the human civilization as we know it ends. How can the dispute in the South China Sea be resolved peacefully?